Hi, Dr. Preeti. Welcome you to this another session of two week refresher course on reinventing the skill education in the light of national education policy 2020. Being organized by Teaching Learning Center, Ramanachan College, and DDO Kaushal Kendra, Department of Vocation, in collaboration with Shrevesh Karnaskal University, Haryana. Today, we have with us our expert speaker, Dr. Mutaza Abbas Rizvi, who is Associate Professor and Head of the Department at National Institute of Technical Teachers Training and Research, Bhopal. The key research areas of his interest are computer education, CBT packages, production, programming, curriculum development, network routing, and learning resource development. He has guided numerous numbers of PhD, MPhil, and MTech students. He has been the editor-in-chief of the reputed journals. In addition, he is a member of advisory board of International Scientific Development Organization, that is ISDO. We are honored to have you with us in this program, sir. We welcome you once again for taking your valuable time and be with us, sir. The session topic would be the outcome-based learning given by the Dr. M. A. Rezvi, sir. The session is over to you, sir. Thank you very much, <clears throat> madam. So to start the session with uh, on outcome-based education. To understand this, what is outcome-based education? For this purpose, actually, we have to understand that what education system we are following now and why, what is the lacuna or what is the shortcomings of this and why we are moving towards the outcome-based education. For this purpose, I would like to show you some of the uh, aspect. Uh, now we have to discuss what type of education system which are, we are following now and what is the lacuna into that and how why we are moving towards the OBE. So to understand that what type of education system we are following, we are following in, uh, we will talk about basically for technical education system. So we will talk about technology education system. What type of education system which we are following here is basically uh, competency-based education right now, which we are following is competency-based education. Now, we, if we try to understand what the competency is, the competency can be defined as or What you can say about what is competency? Competency is nothing, but it is the ability to do the things in the manner it has to be done. It means a person has to do the task or has to do, do the activity or perform the skills in the way the, the things has to be done. Or you can say in other words, for example, if you want to define competency, in other words, competency can be defined as a cluster of skills. For example, skill one, skill two, skill three. When we define, when we combine all these skills, then this become competency. But these skills are related, not the random skills. For example, if I take the example of driving a car, driving a car is basically can be defined or can be differentiated as if we talk about what is what is driving a car. If I ask a question, is it a skill? or it is a competency? The answer will be, what will be the answer for this? Ye, ye kya hoga ki ye skill hoga? Or what is, is it a skill or it is a competency? Answer is very obvious. It is a competency. Not the skill. 
because the skill is a very small thing which is a part of competency not the whole thing if we i say a, a competent driver competent driver means a person who can drive a car in any condition for example on highways or in town or in any situation given situation for example he can drive in rain in any season for example rainy season maybe in valleys all different situation when we give all the situation or in any situation he cannot say that i cannot do this job then only this person is competent for example if we are preparing a person of competent in nature by applying competency based curriculum then what is the problem in that in this type of person who can do everything in any situation in any given situation why we are leaving this type of person why we are not liking these persons the problem is competent persons is basically a they can do the job a given job in any circumstances any given situation so we are making a competent person but why we are moving towards the outcome based education now outcome based education but a competent person cannot be sure to give the output or outcome output dene ki surety nahi hai that is what a competent person is lacking behind for example if i say a competent driver as i have told you a competent driver is there but the problem is he is not in mood to drive it means the output of this person is zero output cannot be achieved so out, outcome based education tell us ki what outcome at the end he or she has given so that the outcome for example the person has to give the output then only we can say this is the output has been achieved or output has been received so outcome based education is basically focusing on what is the ability of one to give the output for the maximization of the industrial profit so this is how if we are focusing on outcome or output we are basically modifying our education system or convert or changing our system changing paradigm from the competency based to the outcome based uh, education to use uh, to understand that what an outcome but the the basically the focus of outcome based is also competency if there is no competency then it is not possible to give the output output will be given or can be achieved after uh, having the person competent if the person is not competent he or she cannot give the output at all so the the focus is still is on the out competency but we have to see that what what output he a person can give so now we will understand we will now go to we will see what is the outcome based education now i am shifting my this board to my my ppt uh, please uh, give me one minute time to change over this situation now we are we try now we'll understand that what the outcome based education is now we can define or we can understand by you by defining how how can we define outcome based education 
outcome based education or outcome based education obe in short form is an education theory or the uh, concept that builds that bases each part of an educational system around goals it is basically focusing on outcomes by the end of the education experience or process each student should have achieved the goals basically this is the um, concept behind the uh, the outcome based education what we are what we are trying to achieve at the end of the outcome based by following outcome based education has the student being uh, is achieving the outcome which is being focused or which is has been defined or not so why outcome based outcome based education is a student centric teaching and learning methodology in which the course delivery assessment are planned to achieve stated objectives and outcomes it focuses on measuring student performance i.e. students outcomes at the different levels level means for example at what le at different level of education we have to assess the achievement the, are they having the proper uh, skills or not when the courses are moving forward the level of complexity is increasing or difficulty level you can say in 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 simple words the difficulty level of the problems are increasing so at different levels we have to measure the competency and the skills and the outcome that means focus will have to be on understanding fundamentals very well and learning new skills competencies that will enable individuals to cope with the demands of the rapidly changing workplaces because nowadays the workplaces or the industry is so dynamic the technology is coming in very fast so students has to cope up that what how the technology has to be they have to paced up with the technology or prepare global engineers or workforce who will have to solve problems and shoulder challenges which are not even known today sometime we have to make them prepare for the futuristic problems that is what which is not known to the um, industry today even so this is the different uh, components of the you can say uh, obe how obe can be categorized or classified so obe has different components or different uh, components into it a vision mission and pos that defines the, that starts uh, the obe or edu outcome based education the program outcomes and the program curriculum the student performance the faculty contribution facility and technical support these are basically and academic support units and government uh, governance and institutional support and continual improvement because this is not the end for example we have achieved some something into the outcome based education that means that doesn't mean the quality education we have to continually improvement improving the quality we should not stop the improvement into the teaching learning process so these are the some of the components of the outcome based education obe that is the education what the student should be able to do this is the focus of the outcome based education obc is outcome based curriculum oblt is outcome based teaching learning process and oba is outcome based assessment these are the basically four major components of the outcome based education this is the framework which is which tells you how to implement it or what is the model to implement the outcome based education i am not i am not uh, going uh, this model is the last this is not the, the last model this is the model which which we can follow for for implementing it i am not going directly on to the implementation part i will come again to my uh introduction of uh, or maybe what are the different components one one by one so that we can understand 
what is the vision and what is the mission as I have shown you in the earlier slide. So this is the model which we can follow. Uh, example outcomes, mission and vision, and PEOs, then PEOs, then CEOs. This is basically PEOs program educational objective. I'll, I'll deal something in detail about it. PO is program outcomes and CO is course outcomes and course planning and delivery is the methodology, teaching learning methods, learning activities, assessment tools, because when we are changing paradigm shift from competency-based education to the outcome-based education, assessment tools has to be modified or has to be uh, mapped up with the newer uh, outcome-based education system because we have to now measure the outcomes, not the uh, content-based education. Assessment evaluation, instructional assessments, program assessments, and course assessment, we have to assess, for example, in the different levels of the teaching learning process. Now, administrative system for implementation of OBE or outcome-based education is course coordinator, you have to appoint a course coordinator, a module coordinator, a program coordinator, a program assessment coordinator, department advisory board, and internal quality assurance cells or IQAC has to be has to be created for implementation, uh, simple or you can say uh, effective implementation of outcome based education. Now. There is something which is called vision and mission of the mission of mission statements. A vision is a powerful and potent mental image about a creative and desirable future. It is an articulation of destination. What we are basically uh, OBE starts with the vision because if we have a vision in my mind where we want to reach or where we want to see our students or where we want to see our institution, if this is not focused, then there is no goal has been defined because vision is nothing but it is a def definition of your goal or focus a target where you want to go from a present situation. So this is a vision has to be defined in such a way that it should be achievable. If it is not achievable, then it is merely a dream. We cannot reach at that point. A vision is a signpost pointing the way for all who needs to understand what the organization is and where it intended to go. I think I have explained you in the earlier point. Then this is the focal point or the target or the end point where we want to see our institution. But this is not the end because if we have achieved that point, we should not stop at that point. We have to increase the target. In the next year. The vision statement is a dream of where one wants the institution to be and inspire all stakeholders because we can achieve this vision only when all stakeholders are basically working to achieve that uh, point. Mission statements are actionable statements that guide the, the stakeholders to act. For example, if we have assigned or designed one vision where we want to go and what we want to achieve. For achieving that point or that target, we have to do some actions. Action has to be very much mappable with the vision. If vision and mission are not matching with each other, actions has to be in such a way that it is basically focusing or that uh, our vision has to be achievable. That is what action should action in such a way. It should it should be in such an orientation that it should re reach towards the vision. What vision is not? Sometimes we are basically um, confused that what is the vision and what is not. A prophecy is not a vision. A mission is not a vision. A factual true or false is not a vision. A, a static thing cannot be vision because vision should be dynamic. It has to be some, uh, not 
all the time a vision should be only one after some time when you have achieved that you have to uh, increase the uh, target the constant on the action except for those in constant with, with the vision this is all which is not the vision how to formulate vision and mission statement this is the strategy that can be used to to define or design uh, the vision bottom up approach has to be taken involve all stakeholders to design or de to craft the vision uh, discussion brainstorming is a one one method by which you can uh, you can collect the ideas uh, from the different stakeholders and gap analysis of sort analysis can be done so that uh, we can identify our institution strength weakness opportunities and threat so that what vision can be can be achievable challenge before the institutions this can also be identified with the help of the swot what are the immediate and long term goals uh, which a institution wants to achieve evolve vision and mission statement based on this discussion and a strategic planning is required to achieve to to formulate the vision vision and mission statements example some of the examples are send person placement in national and multinational companies this may be the one vision of a one one organization or maybe one institution what it it is visioning or what it is focusing for all the students who are undergoing this in the in the courses has to be um, has to be placed in national or multinational companies architects of future it may be different it may be very small and very crisp architects of future it may be uh, another vision spiritually empowered managers technocrats with gandhian philosophy to produce globally acceptable engineering graduates with indian core values this may be some of the example that how to craft i am not give saying that it may be the vision for your institution you can craft your own vision by applying those strategies which i have shown you in the last slide um, what may be the mission to develop a high quality professional ingredient in ethics wisdom and creativity for betterment of the society this may be the another example of this thing now now you have to see that departmental vision and mission statement because there must be two visions now you must you may not be confused with the different vision or maybe the number multiple visions there must be one vision for the institution a broader vision and from the broader vision of the institution you have to craft or maybe you have to drive from the institutional vision to a departmental vision because in every institution there are some department hierarchy and department has to their own vision what they want from their departments to be a excellent center for imparting quality higher education in civil engineering or consult uh, constantly changing social needs with credibility integrity and ethical standard this is the one of the example of civil engineering department mission which may be uh, mapping with the vision of the department accomplish excellent in curricular co curricular activities with a committed faculty through teaching and research which creates technically competent and dedicated civil engineers to serve their surroundings with pride it may be uh, very well seen or observed that there is a vision for the department of civil engineering and to achieve that vision of the civil engineering department the mission has to be has to be in such a way that these two be are aligned if these two are not aligned maybe the vision is going in x direction and vision is, and mission is going in the y direction they will not come they will not converse so this should be a, a converging uh, vision and mission now we are going ahead with that now the vision and mission i think you must have understand so now we are going towards the new topic which is peos that is program educational objective has to be defined first for example if we are not knowing what we want to what what we want to achieve with the program 
program means one degree, one course, there must be a need to define the out objectives of that program. For what purpose we are starting that program? And for this, for this thing, I am just supporting it one, um, one sentence, if you are not sure where you are going, you are liable to end up someplace else and not even know it. This is the statement which is written, for example, if we are directionless and we are not knowing where we are going, it means we are not, we are reaching at some place when after reaching that place, we are even not knowing that what place it is. So program educational objective or objective should be defined well in advance. And what is the purpose of this program education objective and what, what questions to be answered while defining the program edu education objectives are, why should a program be started or continue to exist in, continue to exist at all? So why we are running this program? What is the objective of this program? what kind of identity, professional academics, social problem solver, sustainable solution, developer, ethical, etc., has to be defined or has to be answered first. Graduate will have to years to come because they have to stay into the professional um, era years to come because they have just in the age of maybe 20, 25, they have just completed their course and they have to be there in the profession for a long, long time. So the, 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 the um, what do you call the, ye cheez humare saath kitne din rehne wali hai, ye hume pata hona chahiye. What is the US paper program that the purpose, that the purpose, what is the purpose to start this particular program? POs may be career and professional accomplishments to be achieved. This is what the, at the end of the program, or maybe at the end of the program after some time, PO is basically what the qualities of the pass out after some time, not immediately after. Because after three to five years, what an, a person can do with the professional accomplishment after achieving, after doing the course. This is what the PO means. Program education objectives, I think you must understand the PEOs correctly over here. Program education objectives are broad statements that describe the career and professional accomplishment that the program is preparing the graduates to achieve. What, what the graduation graduates or the pass out has to do at the end of the program. Now, if you want, if you can see, understand, or you want to you want to observe this. I want you to observe observe this 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 diagram, which are the basically uh, mapping of POs. For example, here at this point, this is vision to achieve this. This is mission. This is the third point which I have told you. Vision after vision, there is a mission, and after mission. We have to identify the PEOs, that is program educational objectives of that program. Now, POs, I'll tell you what the POs are in after some time. Then the COs, later on, I'll come to this point also. And one another point which is missing in the earlier slide was GS, that is graduate aptitude attributes, which we have to define. So these are the basically mapping of different um, components of the um, outcome-based education. Maybe PO1 can be, some of the samples are, graduate will complete, compete on a global platform to pursue their professional career in electrical engineering and allied discipline. This is one of the POs maybe of electrical engineering, the POT graduate will pursue higher education and engage in continuous upgradation of their professional skills. Because after some time, maybe after pass out, this may be the problem solver. This may be, may, he may go to the higher education. Graduate will 
communicate effectively and will demonstrate professional behavior while working diverse team. So this is also expected from the pass outs. After some time, graduates will demonstrate concern for society and environment because it is not only that he should be very good professional, but he has to be concerned for the society and concerned for the environment, which is a very, very much need of the today's scenario. Now, process for PEOs, how can the PEOs can be defined or can be manufactured, can be designed, feedback, format for collecting data from stakeholders, process by which POs are created and re reviewed periodically because this is not the end of the program when we have just done one PO, one PO, uh, PO defined once that cannot be run for years together because after some time the technology changes. So we have to change the PEOs. A process to evaluate to what extent POs are attained. This is else at the end of the program, we have to analyze this also. What are our great pass outs have achieved that, that objectives or not? Review, mid corrections, and continuous quality improvement is the key for implementation of outcome based education. Program outcomes now the PEO. PEOs, not PEOs. Now PEOs is program educational objectives. Now here it is program outcomes. There's a difference. PEOs are a statement about the knowledge, skills, and attitudes, attributes the guidance of formal engineering programs should have. This is the this is the quality of the pass out immediately after doing the programs. It means when the graduates or the pass out in one has done the program complete what are the qualities of those pass outs this is called program outcomes profile of graduate re reached through the po's what are the targets which we have defined in initial stages that what should the po of this of the students POs are defined by agency of the country and we in india Defining these are the starting point. This is the basically starting point of any of the program which is running through the outcome based education. Program outcomes POs are defined by agencies which are written over here. You can read it out, it is available uh, everywhere on the internet. But I am just reading it out, reading it out for you in engineering knowledge. One should have engineering knowledge, apply the knowledge of mathematics, science, engineering fundamentals, and the engineering specialization to the solution for the complex engineering problem. Complex engineering problem is another type of problem, which is not a very simple one, because simple we are we are teaching them simple, but we have to ask them to do the complex problem. After some time, problem analysis. This is another uh, another a quality which we, which we want in them to be inculcate, identify, formulate, review, research, literate, and analyze complex engineering problems, reaching substantial conclusion using the first principle, principle of mathematics, natural science, and engineering science. Design development of of solution because this is also expected from them from them to design the solutions design solutions for complex engineering problem because we are focusing on complex we are teaching them simple but after some time they have to be understand that how to how to solve the complex problems conduct investigation of complex problem because it is very much required and whenever they have to understand what the problem is then only they can provide the, the actual solutions. I am not reading the full text. You can see this in the POs of the particular courses. Now, modern food tool usage, because one has to use the modern tools, which is available uh, to solve the problem, because sometimes we are using the older tools we are not knowing that new tools has come to solve the uh, problems. 
create, select, and apply appropriate technique, the source, and modern engineering and IT tools, including prediction and modeling to the complex engineering. Because nowadays, these solution softwares are coming which can, which can model the problem. The, the engineers and the society, this is the one of the another uh, thing which has to be uh, taken care of, apply reasoning informed by the contextual knowledge to assess the social health, safety, legal and cultural issues and the consequent responsibilities relevant to the professional engineering and practices. Environment and sustainability, because environment is a new thing, which is uh, coming to the educational uh, curriculum. Nowadays, government of India has very much uh, enforced or maybe has applied that every curriculum should have environmental and sustainable component into it, understanding the impact of professional engineering solutions into society and environmental context and demonstrate the knowledge of the need of sustainability and development. Ethics apply ethical principles and commit to the professionals ethics and responsibilities and norms of engineering practices. Individual and teamwork, one has to do the work. Maybe sometimes the people are individually very good, but they are not very good in the team. So they have to learn how to work in the team. Communication is the most important and effective. If it is not very effective, I think this is very much a difficult for a person to grow because whatever he can do or she can do cannot express well then I think the problem cannot be cannot be uh, explained to the to the subordinates. Project management and finance. The project management is very much required because everything, every 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 work is a project and it has to, it has to be complete in a time. If it is not, I think it is very much required to 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 take over any any task in the form of project management issues. Lifelong learning, because this is the very much important part, because if we stop our learning at one point of time, after that, I think it is very much required to learn in your life. Otherwise, you cannot know the newer technology to apply, how to apply it. Now, some of the things which is program specific objective, there are two types of uh, outcomes, sorry. It is program specific outcomes. One is the, in, in any of the program, there are two types of outcome. One is called generic, another is called specific. Generic outcome, I think I will explain in the last two, three slides. But these are basically that every pass out has to have maybe of that any discipline. But in specific, specificity, specificity, for example, in computer science, people, the person should have some specific skills and uh, Competency, which a profession of IT and science, computer science has to be there. Or maybe civil engineering has some different uh, um, outcomes. Maybe electrical engineering has different outcomes. So there is something which is called specific outcomes that is known as PRIAM specific outcomes that is by known as SPSOs. Maybe PSO one, two, three, maybe enough for defining any program, maybe be in computer science or maybe be in electrical or maybe some other type of courses. Maybe PSO one able to analyze and design building the structural system because this is the one of the uh, PSO of, in, of civil engineering, PSO two and PSO three in the same way you can define able to provide design solution to water supply and sewage systems. PSO3 able to identify and analyze transportation engineering problems and provide solutions for the benefit of the society. Now course outcome, whatever we have defined in the PSO, now we are coming to the particular course or particular subject, this is known as COs. Statement of observable students action that serve as evidence of knowledge, skill and attitudes required in a course. So for example, to do to put some course in the program, there must be some competency has to be defined and for do, for solving, for achieving that competency, there must be some knowledge and skills and attitudes are required to achieve those things. Each course is designed to meet 
about six to six force outcome, maybe five or five outcome based on the mapping of the unit of one to one unit. For example, unit one of the curriculum of the course may be mapped with the CO one. Maybe the uh, unit two of the of these of the course may be mapped with the CO two. Likewise, you can define as number of COs which are as number of units in your curriculum. The course outcomes are stated in such a way that they can actually in measured. But you cannot define such a course outcome which cannot be measured. For example, understanding of something, I think for understanding is not measurable. So define COs in such a way that is the measurable at the end. POs are attained through the program specific core courses. POs and these, the POs which are uh, defined can be uh, basically uh, achieved by the help of the course outcome. Now, this is some of the examples of engineering physics not, uh, of the course outcome. For uh, COs, uh, understand and knowledge of the basic quantum mechanics to be set up I think these are these are not understanding, 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 and understanding are not basically the COs which can be defined in in the right way. Because something has to be measurable. Understanding is is is, is not a word, is not a word or is not a verb which can be measurable. Now you can see here. In this chart, there is some Bloom's taxonomy. In the for example, there are some domains of learning. In domains of learning, there are three domains, psychomotor, affective, and cognitive. In the cognitive domain, there is the Bloom's level. The level, the first level is remembrance, understanding, apply, analyze, and evaluate. These are the different five, five levels of Bloom's taxonomy in the domains of learning, the program outcomes starts with apply. Remember and understanding cannot be touched here because we are expecting to our graduates that they have to start with the application of the knowledge and problem analysis and design. These three things has to be, to be focused on in any of the graduate programs which starts, we cannot ask an engineer to, to define something, to understand something, but what we, what we want is to apply the knowledge. Apply the knowledge if they are not applying. For example, the course outcome is not of apply or analysis or the design level. This means these outcomes are not basically correct. The structure of course outcome, the course outcome statement may be broken down into two main components an action world and learning statement. These two can be combined together to form a course outcome. A action world that identifies the performance to the demonstrator. What performance is needed? Just yes, that has been defined by the world action world. Learning statement that specifies what learning will be demonstrated in the performance. Example of good action worlds are included in course outcome statements are compile, identify, create, plan, reserve, analyze, design, select, utilize, apply, demonstrate, prepare, use, compute, discuss, predict, assess, compare, rate, critique, online, or evaluate. These are some of the um, proposed words which can be used in the defining of course, course outcome. Here you can see how uh, course titles and uh, some of the examples apply law of physics to compute in different types of response in the given material. You can, you can define like this. Here is apply analyze. For example, if you want to go for analyze one, the structural element for different force, systems to compute design a parameter, design compression element using engineering principles to resist any given loads, conduct experiment to validate physical 
behavior of the material or components prepare laboratory reports in the interpretation of the experimental results these are the different uh, bloom's taxonomy levels where we can design our course outcome at different level by using different um, action verbs this is one of the table which uh, you can see how to implement the uh, assessment part it is the one more process that identify collect and prepare data for evaluation the achievement of the course outcome and program outcome this is how at the end of the program one has to define this table and see that how much uh, one has uh, achieved the course outcome and program outcomes this is the complex table when you have to work and implement i think at that time you can uh, prepare this table but uh, this is the structure which uh, i am showing you that can be uh, designed for evaluation of the programs co pure relationship is very much or very crucial thing each co can be defined to address the subject of pure because pure is the program outcomes uh, which is at the end of the program one has to be there but co and pure should be mapped together because co should not in such a way that it should be it should co should be in such a way that it should map or should they have to go they have to be designed in such a way that pure has to be achieved at the end based on the number of cos and sessions dedicated to them is possible to identify the strength of the mapping based on these strength of the selected pos and cos matrix can be established at the end we have to identify that whatever we have defined pos in the initial of the program are being achieved by using the cos which we have by this by by teaching them different courses that each courses have different cos all the cos should not be should um, take part in achieving any of the po if it is not i think that co is should not be taken care of this is the one of the co pure mapping this is another a complex a complex uh, table but uh, we have to see that what co is being basically uh, attaining the what po and there is a level of 1 2 and 3 3 means very relevant which is achieving some co some po Two is middle level. One is least, and dash is means it is not contributing to achieve any of the PO. Alignment of assessment of CO and hence the PO example. Some of the examples are that for alignment of CO, the assessment should be in the alignment of the COs. Question papers should be set up to uh, to assess all COs, not only one or two. the average marks obtained in assessment against item for each co will be indicated the co attainment indicators can be targeted for each co for his or her course attainment gap can be therefore be identified if we have to see or analyze in a very micro level what co has not been attained or not been achieved by teaching the uh, outcome based education instructors can plan to reduce the attainment gaps for enhancing attainment targets what the po how the how can you say that po has been attained or not all pos can be adequately addressed through the selection of four courses and their cos attainable targets can be selected for each of the cos if assess assessment is in alignment with the cos the performance of the students indicates the co statement this measurable provides the basis of continuous improvement in the quality of learning basically at the end we have to see that all the things has to be continually improved so that the target has been achieved or not continuous improvement is required closing the loop of the course level program level and institution level ensure quality assurance for stakeholders all attainment analysis is made to provide continuous improvement through either in course diversity delivery sorry assessment and curriculum in the obe outcome based education 
So in the end, we can say that outcome-based education is basically focusing on the ability of students at the end of the program, and that should be measurable in terms of outcome. This is all about from my side. Thank you very much.